to debate on clauses 6 through to 18 stand part. I call the Honourable Member Darian Fenton. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Well, um, I'm happy to take a call um, in part two of the Land, Transport and Road User Charges Legislation Amendment Bill. And I think it's been an interesting discussion from the uh, Labour and Green members of the House who have got, who've um, made a contribution to this debate by reflecting on what our trans transport system should be, how we use the fees that are taken um, um, from uh, uh, freight vehicles and others and road user charges, how we use them most effectively, but also how we use the land transport fund, uh, the money that goes from petrol uh, excise tax um, into a special fund, which Labor did actually, it's called hypothecation, into a special fund to build a system, a transport system that is fair to everybody, that takes into account, that uses all modes of transport, that uh, makes sure that people can get about and get to work, uh, can get to school, uh, can get to amenities and so on, uh, which is why we see it in places like Auckland, where I live, such a huge focus now on, um, on um, <coughs> public transport. And uh, it was very interesting the other day to be at the event where the uh, electrification was turned on <coughs> and uh, the member Julian Gentle was there too. And to see John Key turned up for it John yeah. Key turned up for it, and Jerry Brownlee and a whole lot of hangers-on um, National Party hangers-on members, MPs, uh, for this great event about electrification. Now, I was bemused by that because actually it was a Labor government working with the Greens in 2007 that initiated and funded electrification of the rail. It, who was the minister then? Well, it was the Honourable Annette King, and it was a fantastic decision. And I was very, very proud to be there. And not one, one bit of recognition from that government, from that government. And also, not, not, bit of, not one bit of recognition from the government that it was Labour that did the double tracking in Auckland, so that we are going to have a rail network in Auckland in the future, once the government gets over itself and funds the city rail link as well. So, you know, the whole, um, the, the whole uh, transport portfolio, the transport policy is really important to everybody in the country. But this bill, as I said, is correcting a small anomaly, and I want to go back and talk about another one that I encountered uh, in, during the recess. And uh, out in the country, out in the regions, uh, travelling around the rural roads, you can see it everywhere you go. This government has sucked up funding uh, through its roads of national significance, its gold-plated highway, highways to nowhere, and regional roads and rural roads are missing out. That's and councils right. up and down the country are up in arms because the government is reviewing FARS funding, which is the funding that helps them uh, keep their local roads in order. They are very worried because what it means is if that funding, if the funding review comes out like it's being looking like it will, it's going to cost ratepayers a whole lot more. But for me, the most interesting visit I had was to the East Coast, to Gisborne the other day, where I met with some truck drivers. Now, I know the Road Transport Forum likes to think that I'm anti-truck. I am not anti-truck, I am pro-truck drivers, because I think they've got a really hard job. And these two truck drivers are forestry, they drive forestry logging trucks. And they are driving them day in and day out because forestry is booming in the East Coast. They are driving these huge rigs that they pay half a million dollars for. And they are driving them on shocking roads because this government is ignoring uh, the funding that's needed in rural areas like the East Coast on secondary roads and putting those drivers to work on unsafe roads. They are rutted. They are unsealed. They fill up with mud. They slip and slide everywhere over. The culverts overflow. And what the forestry industry infrastructure has been neglected, has been neglected by this government. Yet, yet and the minister sitting in the chair at the moment knows the consequences of ignoring safety in the forestry industry. He knows the consequences of this. Yet on this road there has been two deaths in the last six months. 
two accidents killing forestry logging drivers. Now, I talk to these guys. These are hard-working guys. They are owner-drivers, so they own their own business. But they are, they are really upset. Their question to me was, how, Mr Chair, Darian Fenton. We pay something like $53 million in road user charges in this area. We see nothing of it. We see nothing on it. And every day they tell me there are 10 near misses on that road. And it's, so it's not just the forestry logging truck drivers at risk. They, a bus was run off the road the other day. It's other drivers on those roads. It's really, really dangerous, Mr Chair. And as I said, forestry is booming in the East Coast and it's, only, it's going to continue to grow as more trees come online. So I just I cannot understand why the government isn't on this, isn't doing something at, uh, to repair the critical neglect of... Uh, of uh, forestry roads, in particular secondary roads, why are they um, have embarked on a funding review for regional councils, where regional councils are just so worried about they, how they are going to get their goods and services, how they are going to keep their drivers safe and their road users safe, and it's the same in Northland. It's the same in Northland. The mayor up there has been raising this issue, and we have no answers. Now, Labor has an answer. Labor has an answer. We have announced our forestry policy two weeks ago, and we also announced that we would put back in $200 million of funding for critical regional roads in the forestry industry. So we have an answer. We have an answer for those truck drivers. They know that Labor believes that their lives are worth standing up for and doing something about and helping them earn a living and helping uh, a town like Gisborne flourish right. and helping it come along, helping uh, this whole forestry industry, which is so critical to our country. Uh, and of course, we want to see value add as well. So it's not just the logs coming out of the forest and onto, onto the ports. So I think that is an anomaly. There is an anomaly in road user charges where this government does not take into account the issue of the, of the sole truck driver in Gisborne driving his half a million dollar rig, which is actually, some have been split in half. That's how bad the roads are. Their tyres split. Um, and they take, don't take that into account. They listen to the big boys. They listen to the big boys. So when you have submissions on road user charges, you hear from the Road Transport Forum and others, but we, you know, it's not often that a lonely truck driver driving on dangerous roads actually gets to have any say or gets heard by this government. So I challenge those members to go to Gisborne, meet the same drivers I did, get in their rigs and go on these, those roads and see how they feel about it, how dangerous it is, how scary it is. And it's not just, as I said, those truck drivers who are paying their road user charges and are keeping their trucks up to scratch as much as they can. It's not just them, it's the other road users who are at risk. So we have to take responsibility for it. This is a problem with the road user charges system. The government is neglecting rural roads and regional roads, and our road user charges system will not be sufficient until the government understands that we've got to have a fair share of the National Land Transport Fund that goes not only to cities, but also goes to regions who are so critical for our future. Final rate, we'll go and talk to them in Northland. Absolutely. A new bridge. But the roads, the forestry roads are shocking. That's and right. the forestry roads, people are driving off them. I have someone who rings me every morning who lives on State Highway 1 and says there's been another truck go off the road, Darian. You start monitoring it. That member should start I'm monitoring it. And finally, you see, they don't like it when we see it. Hitting a nerve. Yes, hitting a nerve. You don't like it when Labor stands up for the drivers, for truckies. Don't like that. I absolutely don't like that. So this bill, as uh, my colleagues have said, Mr Chair, um, part two, we are supporting it. It needs to be fixed. Of course we're supporting it. It is a waste of time that we're having to do this. I would much rather that we were spending in our time, our time in this House, 
doing something for those hard-working forestry truck drivers, those logging truck drivers who are putting their lives on the line every day uh, to help their families, to help the economy. I would rather we were doing something about that. And actually, instead of shouting across the chamber from the other side, we put our heads together on the Transport and Industrial Relations Select Committee and come up with a solution. Come up with a solution, because this is dangerous work, Mr, <coughs> Mr. Chair. Pardon? Take a call. Take a call. That's a good idea. That's a good Take idea. A call. So, as I said, look, we please to support this. I call the honourable member Julie and order, order. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Have you finished?